Well, hello again. This is Philip at thebest3d.com and uh, another quick tutorial here. Just a quick update. This is now using version 11.4, plushy whales and snow cones. 11.4 that uh, has a couple of new features. You may recognize a few changes here on the right side. I have my, um, my sidebar to the right side. You can, of course, still configure that under the layout options from the view menu. Sidebar on left, sidebar on right, lots of other choices. One thing I want to do today is talk about animation and specifically filters with animation. Right, so let's get started first. Let's create a slightly smaller image. Uh, so let's go create a file new and uh, let's do something like 640 by, let's make it a somewhat widescreen format, aspect ratio. And uh, let's change the colors. I'm going to erase to black. So I'm going to just switch the two, the primary color and the secondary color. That one's already black. If it didn't uh, show in black because you may have changed it already, you can always click on that and uh, set it to a different color and black it is. And then you can click here to erase it. Now you can, if you have a whole animation sequence already, you can... Um, you can also right click here and clear to clear all frames. We don't have the animation yet here. This is left over from the prior animation. Let's uh, go and create a new animation. Let's go create that right here and say we need about six seconds. So maybe 180 frames. There's a couple of ways to figure out how many you need based on the frame rate you want, based on dimensions. It'll tell you how much memory it needs. Uh, just make sure it doesn't go over two gigabytes. It's a 32-bit application. Uh, you would be in trouble beyond two gigabytes, two and something, I don't know, 2.1, something like that. Uh, anyway, so we got about uh, 180 frames here, all erased to black, and I'm going to store that. This is sort of a uh, part of the workflow. You want to go to the animation and store the animation, either in memory, that's relatively fast, but it uses memory, and sometimes we want to keep that real estate for something else, so let's go and save it to disk. And I would highly recommend you install your, on a, your software on a uh, SSD. The SSD drives are so much faster. Uh, this is a small animation, and small dimensions, and low number of frames, but uh, if you're doing something much higher, like uh, high definition, uh, you're going to definitely want to be on an SSD drive. All right, so there's a lot of things we can do with that. This is a stored copy in memory or on disk, and you can preview it. Everything here is black. There is only a set of dark frames. Now, this being an animation, you could call it an animation placeholder. You can go to the paint tools and start painting. So you can go from one frame to the next, and if you have any sort of talent, unlike me, you could uh, draw something like, I don't know, a face and some smiley appearance there, and then... Uh, do that sort of thing, right? And in fact, if you want to take this into really traditional animation, uh, you would want to enable the onion skin or light table. There it is. There's a toggle for the old onion skin, and it shows you the prior frame and the next one. In fact, two or three of them. Uh, there's a little pull down, and you can see there's a whole arsenal of frames, and you can also control perhaps the weight the, the the appearance, the intensity of these. There's even a redshift, so you can see which frame is ahead of it and which frame is after the current frame. Um, so that's a red and blue shift. That will be useful if you are indeed doing what I'm not going to do here, which is um, uh, traditional animation. What I'm talking about is more of the um, applying filters across an existing animation, right? You may have something you rendered in 3D and now you want to add a filter to it over, I don't know, maybe add some fog effect. There's a couple of filters like photographic filters here, uh, add some fog filter, sunset, that sort of things, right? Uh, many, most of these filters here will apply on the current frame or also on the whole animation sequence. Right. And for instance, if you look at the transform filter, you will see that quite often it will have the option to do stuff and then uh, do even more stuff and yet even more stuff. And then you could say, well, let's do that stuff to all of the frames. So instead of clicking OK, you'll click Animate. And what that does is just apply the transform to all of the frames. Now, I only have a few frames to actually show something there, but you see it goes through all of the frames and it transformed all of these. All right, let's go erase. You can erase again, right click here to say clear all frames. Or if you had a stored copy, which I highly recommend you do, you just click here and that loads this back into the animation. It also erases the swap image.
image. Uh, so if you have a swap image in the background there, it's still black right now. Let's go and erase it to white. Let's right click here, erase it to white, and then switch back to the main. So you're looking at the main image sequence here, and there is a swap image that is currently blank. If you do something like click on a stored copy to restore the animation, it will also erase what's in the swap image. And in this case, it erases it to black. That's why it was all dark. When I click here and switch back and forth between the main and the swap, it's not showing any different because my erase color, after all, is black. All right, so that makes sense now. Let's see what we want to do with that. Um, let's just focus on actually having something in this uh, video, in this animation. Let's say you load an image sequence. There's a couple of ways to import them. You can load a sequence. Let's say you have a bunch of uh, PNG or TIFF or Targa images, JPEGs, whatnot. You can also load and store a whole sequence. You have a folder containing a bunch of uh, JPEG images, for instance, and you can uh, you can have those directly stored into a stored copy. Uh, that's a pretty handy dandy thing. Uh, the other things we'll do though is we'll just get creative and use some of these tools like the render tool. Let's go render some cheap sky and uh, we'll animate. So uh, as with many other filters, this filter also can animate. We'll do uh, a little bit of a change in the contrast. Um, maybe we'll change the zoom factor. Uh, let's see, fog color, we might make it a little bit darker. And uh, let's see what gradients we might like better here. Okay, well, let's just go with this. All right, maybe sky color, we could make it a little bit darker, more saturated. Yeah, there you go. All right, so now let's not apply it on just this one frame, but across the whole animation. And some filters will, in that case, just go do that. And other filters, like this one, will ask some extra questions. This particular one will want to know if you want to do any sort of change in the X, Y, or Z direction for this fractal generated sky. Um, the speed X will basically move it sideways. Right. If you want the clouds to move sideways, you give it some amount of speed. If you give it a positive value, it will start moving the clouds to the right side over time. If you give it a negative value, of course, no surprise, it goes the other way. And with speed Y, it comes towards you or goes away from you. So this is kind of a up and down in the three dimensions, if we want to call it that, uh, over your head. And uh, so that's uh, definitely one I will do. I'll give it about six or seven. There, let's give it eight. So it will move pretty fast. A little bit drift to the side, why not? Let's give it a one, slightly drifting to the right side. And there is one more parameter here, which is the Z factor. With the Z factor, you can essentially have these clouds change shape. This is a, a fractal cloud system. And as you dive through or slice through the Z space, you will see different shapes coming up, and that can be a very interesting effect, in fact, if you use it to create some really fancy elevation maps that change over time. Could be useful for uh, uh, displacement for uh, waves on the water. It could be uh, just the, the sand dunes or the mountains moving, who knows. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a little bit there too. I'm gonna say it's changing. And there's also a fade option fading in or out to the background color. I'm going to leave that alone and not use that and OK that. So now it's going through all of these frames and you can see a little bit of movement. You can see a lot of movement in one direction. And uh, it's not always going to actually show you what it's doing because it may not be able to keep up with the pace uh, depending on the speed of your system. So mine is a little bit on the slow side and it's going to pause and not show the update, but it's still happening behind the scene if you give it a few extra seconds, it will be done all over. So now we have a nice little animation. And the first thing we want to do with that, of course, is to store that one too. All right, store the disk. So we now have two stored copies, one of the original. I can always restore to that. Or this one, I can click on that and restore to this. All right, so we have an animation, and that was the first starting point we really wanted to get to. So now what do all these other filters do? All right, the filters. Well, they do all sorts of things. Um, you might, for instance, use the saturation threshold, uh, hue saturation value. Any of these typically will have some effect on the current frame, if you click OK, or the same effect on all the frames of the animation, if you click Animate or Any, depending on how short the space we have to squeeze that in. Uh, there's also a side-by-side -side view. That's sort of a preview, so as you're 
applying something, you'll see the right half applying it, the left half as a comparison showing you the original for uh, you know decision making because these are tough choices. So. <laughs>